Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It's been a miserable start to July, at least that's my view, because I like warm, dry and sunny weather. So far, temperatures are tracking well below the 30 year average. You can see here between two and three Celsius underneath it, depending on which series you choose, at least according to the weather outlook tracker, which of course is not the official central England temperature one, but it's fairly close to it. Also, there has been lots of rain around in much of the UK. In my locality, we've had close to 100% of the monthly total in the first eight days. So, is there any sign of things changing as we head through the next two weeks? Is summer finally set to arrive? Well, I think the news is quite mixed, but let's start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic and the first week. The animation here runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 9th, and at the outset it's not a very summery looking picture at all. We've got areas of low pressure sitting over the UK, another one here down to the southwest, high pressure to the northwest. There is some heavy rain around. It's moving northwards across the UK, showers following into the south. As I run the sequence, what we see is that area of low pressure does start to pull away, but there's further rain to come in the short term. The other area of low pressure, which I uh, pointed out, tracks to the south of the United Kingdom. It's very close, so it needs watching as we head through Friday and into the weekend. There is just a chance that could be a little bit further north, and if that happens, there could well be some very heavy bursts of rain pushing into southern parts of Britain. Keep an eye on the short range forecasts because as I run the sequence here, what we see is that moves away. It doesn't really impact us a great deal into the weekend for some showers, but also a lot of dry weather. Then the early part of next week, it turns changeable again. Another area of low pressure pushes in from the west, a little bit dry for a time, but at the very end here, yet more rain beginning to move in. The other thing though to note is that pressure is building a little bit to our south and that could have an impact on temperatures. We could start to see it turning warmer through the second half of the first week. The upper air temperature and jet stream sequence illustrates it quite well. The problem we've got at the moment, at least if you like warm, dry and sunny weather, is that the jet stream is to the south of the UK. You can see the mottled shaded area here and that means we're on its cooler northern side. Now, does that remain the case as we go through the first week? Well, in the short term, the answer is yes, very mixed, but then towards the end of the week, there are indications of a jet stream there beginning to migrate northwards and some significantly warmer air feeding into the southern half of the United Kingdom as that takes place. Therefore, lots happening through the first week. As ever, by the end of it, the details start to become very uncertain, as I'll show you by looking at the deterministic models later when I compare them. But just quickly, here are some surface forecast charts based on that same computer model run. Wednesday, the 10th of July, rain mostly in the north. It's drier now in the south and if the sun breaks through then the southeast it could feel pleasantly warm 22 or even 23 celsius. Forwards to Friday quite a lot of dry weather around but at this point we've got the high pressure to the west of the UK winds coming over the top of it so it's a northerly flow rather cool air moving down across all regions so temperatures remaining at this stage a little bit below the norm. Into a weekend, a mixed scenario, as I say, by this stage, even the details start to become uncertain, but the showers or long spells of rain, at least according to this, it's drier in central and southeastern England. That's where the highest temperatures are as well. Then into the early part of next week, we've got another area of low pressure, which I showed, bringing showers or long spells of rain. It was on Tuesday and Wednesday, that the warmer air started to feed into the south. So it's a very mixed picture through the first week. In terms of the rainfall totals, here are the five day accumulations in millimeters from ECM and GFS models. Generally wettest in the north and northeast, that's due to the initial area of low pressure slowly moving away, but some rain in all parts of the United Kingdom. Forwards to the 0-10 day charts, 
The totals in the southeast, they haven't really increased a great deal on the GFS chart, which is one on the right. Even on the ECM chart, it's the amounts there not huge in East Anglia and the southeast wettest in the north but certainly most of the rain according to both of these models falls through days 0 to 5 with somewhat drier conditions developing through the 5 to 10 day period but in more general terms let's have a look at the deterministic models to see how they compare with each other towards the end of the first week here's the gfs which the animations were based on and it's quite a mixed looking picture as i said for some Warmer air pushing into the south, but really pressure's not building strongly across the UK. There continues to be an Atlantic influence. Likewise with the Canadian model, in fact this one looks potentially quite unsettled with this area of low pressure just to the southwest here. There is a chance with this type of pattern that some significantly warmer air could be pulled up into central and eastern counties ahead of that, always something to look out for. The German icon also painting an unsettled pattern, low pressure areas close to the UK. The European ECM doesn't look settled either. We've got fairly low pressure and Atlantic influence continuing. Finally though, the UK Met Office Global, a little bit different because high pressure from the Azores is building more strongly northeastwards towards the UK. The Atlantic influence there really at this point becoming restricted mostly to northern parts of the United Kingdom. So I think taking them all together as we head towards the end of the first week, low confidence in how this is going to play out. On balance, it looks like quite a changeable pattern still. Showers or long spells of rain remaining possible, especially in the northern half of the United Kingdom. A signal though that high pressure may be starting to play more of a role in the south at least. So how do things shape up as we head through week two? Of course, as I always say, it's purely about the trends and the probabilities at this range. If you want specifics, go to a different source because I don't think it's possible to provide day-to-day -day weather details at this range. It really is looking for the direction of travel. Is it gonna be turning warmer, more settled or not? To start with, here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top. The suggestion here is that they are likely to be above average for much of a week, and I've not said that quite a lot in, in recent updates, not very frequently in recent updates, because it has been quite a cool picture. So if anything, we could be seeing some warmer conditions if this is correct. In terms of rainfall, well, there are also not that many spikes showing up there through the second week. Possibly drier and warmer periods. And the two meter temperature data table here for London just reinforces the message about the chance of it turning somewhat warmer. Lots of these pinks and reds in the columns. The reds are 26 to 30 Celsius maximums in a minority, but not not an insignificant minority, and the uh, 21 to 25 is dominating, so possibly quite warm at times, at least here in southern England through week two. The overnight lows, double figures on most nights, as I think you would really expect at this time of the year. Up to Manchester, now the signal here on the upper air temperature part of the plot is weaker. It looks like most of the runs are keeping values close to that 30 year norm. Of course, there is some fluctuation, warmer and cooler air masses moving across the, this part of the UK through the second week. In terms of rainfall, quite a few spikes to start off with. But the number here also decreases, so the chance of drier periods rises, at least for a time, because of the very end there, it could be that the number of spikes is starting to grow, rise once more. Two metre temperatures, the data table here shows similar trends really to the London one at lower levels though. More of the orange there, maximums of between 16 and 20. 21 to 25 is quite a lot of that too. But here it's not going to be as warm as is often the case in the, as it is in the southeast. Finally up to Glasgow, the upper air temperature profile there shows most of the runs keeping things close to the average. Once more there is some fluctuation of course, 
But the difference here I would suggest is that there are more rain spikes, so there's an ongoing risk of showers or even longer spells of rain as we head northwestwards across the UK. More of an Atlantic influence remaining in place. The two meter temperatures for Glasgow lower than they were in Manchester, which were in turn lower than in London. Some of the nights there seeing values dropping down into single figures. Now, rainfall as we go through the second week is illustrated by these charts from the European Ensemble model. They each have a chance of five millimetres or more of rain falling on the first three days of the second week. Wettest in the west, the northwest. Therefore, the takeaway here is that the Atlantic flow will be continuing in general terms. As I say, it looks mostly like it will be impacting the northern half of the United Kingdom. You can see the orange shade in there in Northern Ireland, Western Scotland on the middle and right hand charts. But there isn't a signal for high pressure to really become dominant. And that message is reinforced by the charts for the following three days which indicate quite a high risk of significant rain there in the northwest of the UK. Driest in the south and the east. The GEFS mean surface level pressure plot for Friday the 19th of July reinforces the message. High pressure there building northeastwards from the Azores towards the UK. It's having more influence across southern and central regions. Quite interestingly, the ECM ensemble plot here has the high pressure building a little bit more strongly northwards. Just worth mentioning that the rainfall probability charts I showed a little earlier were generated using data from the previous ECM ensemble update because the latest wasn't available to me. Not all the data from it was available to me at the time of filming. Whereas this showing surface pressure is the very latest update. So perhaps the ECM moving towards a little bit more of a high pressure dominated scenario. I'm going to finish though by throwing in a big caveat. Here are three deterministic model runs for Friday the 19th of July, so not ensemble data, these are just snapshots, but I think it's just worth showing them. This is from the European deterministic, the Canadian there, the top right, and the GFS the lower right. None of them look particularly settled. In fact, the ECM has a nasty area of low pressure centered just to the northwest, and you wouldn't really suggest that any of these are going for a prolonged period of settled weather at this range at least. So, to summarize, week one, changeable early on with showers or longer outbreaks of rain, though it's becoming mostly confined to the north. It then turns drier, but with high pressure set to, center to the west, it will be rather cool. By the end of the week, things become uncertain, but there is that growing risk once more of showers or longer spells of rain returning, but temperatures could well be climbing at least for a time in the south. Week two, on the whole, dry periods are more likely, but there is still a risk of showers or even long spells of rain, especially in the northwest. Probably quite warm in the south, at least on some days, but in the north, temperatures will be closer to the average. Note, other outcomes are very possible. Confidence, I think, at the moment is lower than usual at this range, and it's never very high when looking more than about a week ahead. So, uh, there we have it. I think it's quite a mixed picture on the whole. The hope, I'm not going to say the promise, the hope of dry periods becoming more frequent as we head through week two, it could also coincide with temperatures rising. So a more summary feel to things is quite possible, especially in southern and central regions later on in the forecast period. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Remember, of course, to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much for watching now. Bye.